Hey, welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. In today's video, I'm going to be taking apart a four bank carb set that go to this uh, Suzuki GS550 motor. The reason why I'm taking them apart is mainly cosmetics. There is no way I'm going to put these on that engine and call it acceptable. Uh, this, this, these things are filthy dirty. Now, I have cleaned them already in a laboratory cleaner. And yeah, I got all the gunk and nastiness off of it, but my God, these things are still crappy looking. So uh, there's only one way to clean these, period. That is to take them apart and yeah, hand clean them, all right? So that's what I'm going to do. Now, as far as powder coating them, uh, um, uh, these will be painted, okay? I'm, I'm not going to powder coat the actual carb bodies. The bowls, and the top covers, these will be powder coated. Now, all these colors I've already used on this engine, so it will match when I get done with it. This is <laughs> an entertainment purposes only video because I'm not gonna say it's an instructional video at all because like I said, I've never done this. Now, if it comes out and they work great, yeah, sure, it'll be an instructional video then. <laughs> but um, I'm really anxious to get into this it's yeah there's a lot of parts in here but it's not overwhelming you know you take it one step at a time but something that is really i'm concerned about and other than the cosmetics it's the functionality of this or a problem that i was kind of aware of and i talked to some technicians about it these little fuel connectors right here there's three of them and they have o-rings in there and this bike being from circa 1981, they more than likely will leak eventually. So those O-rings need to be changed. The only way to change those, break the bank apart, change the O-rings, put them back together. So, you know, that's how I'm justifying doing this other than cosmetic. Let's have some fun. Let's get with this. You guys get to watch me tear this apart and hopefully get it back together correctly. So let's see what happens. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is just take these brackets. The screwdriver that I'm using is a JIS. Japanese industrial standard. The reason for these, opposed to Phillips, is if you use a Phillips screwdriver on a JIS screw, you will ruin that screw and more than likely have to drill it out. So you can pick these guys up uh, off of Amazon. They're just, they look just like Phillips, but they are not. Uh, anyway, I'll uh, put a link down below in the description area. And you can go down there and get some fairly reasonably priced. Uh, sizes one, two, and three will be the only three sizes that you will need to work on Japanese motorcycles. These are very well made screwdrivers though. These cost me, uh, I think, 32, 33 bucks. So, you know, a little over 10 bucks a screwdriver, but uh, they are well made. Okay, I went ahead and marked these uh, carbs with little hash marks. Uh, I doubt you'll be able to pick them up in the camera, but you know, one, two, three, and four. Even though it only goes back together one way, uh, I, I just like doing things like that. All right, there's number one, and yeah, it does have a little O-ring. Now this one is not one to slide out as easy as what the other ones did. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, this one's already started leaking. Okay, I want to go ahead and attempt to take this mousetrap spring out of here and also the axle and the baffle. Don't do this un unless it's absolutely necessary. And like I said, the only reason why I'm doing it is cosmetics. That's it. I could easily change out these O-rings, clean these up, change the O-rings out, and, you know, clean the carbs up and then reassemble the thing. But... I'm big, big, big on cosmetics, and I'm going to just do it, go into it. I took some pictures of this right here. Uh, as, as far as the orientation of the springs and so on and so forth, hopefully I can get it. This little nut right here is uh, 5 sixteenths, will work. Also, there is a roll pin right there, and that has to be driven out for this unit to come off. Uh, there's a little bit of tension on that spring. A rotation uh, T 
tension set on this spring is 180 degrees, so that, that's not very bad at all. Uh, now I attempt to take these little screws out. Hopefully they'll just come out with these. Uh, and no, they're not. Now if these don't want to come out, then they're staying in. Okay, those little screws down in there on the other side, you can't really see them. They don't want you to take those screws out. <laughs> those screws have been set. In other words, they've been hit with a punch on the back side to flare the uh, lead of the screw out. So that's staying in. I'm not taking that out. Okay, let's pull this out, see what it looks like. You know, another neat thing about this Bever is this basket has little feet on it and they're rubber coated. And I get a lot of comments saying that, oh, the little rubber feet will wear out, you know, and it'll vibrate a hole through the bottom of this tank. Well, if you, it's designed that if you connect these little hook handles here over the sides, the feet don't even touch the bottom of the tank. This is a very well designed, very well built machine. I'm gonna give you guys a close up of this. They're a little warm. You see, it has some staining on it and that's just from age and being out in the elements. And the only thing to take that out is a heavy duty blast in the blasting cabinet with the aluminum oxide, which I am not going to do. It's just too risky getting that crud down inside here. So I'm not gonna do that, but, but anyway, that's why we're painting them. Okay, let me rinse these off and get all this mean green or simple green off, same thing. One just costs a lot less. Yeah, the reason why I'm showing you guys me actually rinsing these off is just to strengthen the effect of how important it is to do that. Because if you just take these out of the tank and you do not rinse them off, that cleaner, that degreaser will leave a film on here. Well, I got the carbs all taped up and masked off. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you one thing. This is very detailed work and very tedious. Uh, frankly, it's just a pain in the butt to do it. I mean, I spent like three hours, maybe a little bit longer, of uh, making sure all this is in the right place. And that way the paint and the powder coat only goes where I want it to go but hopefully to be very well worth it. If you've been liking the video up till now, then please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell too while you're at it, so you know when my next videos are coming out. I wanna give you guys a close up of this carb again, right there, so you can see what it looks like before and after I spray paint it. I mean, it's okay, it's clean, it's just uh, stained really, really bad. I could powder coat it, but I'm not going to because I just, no. I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. And the paint that I'll be using is Krylon. I'm gonna spray these bowls first with Prismatics polished aluminum, then come back and spray it with Prismatics clear coat matte. Oh, by the way, if any of you are wondering what this tube is on the end of my Eastwood, that is a diffuser that I make here at Cycle 4 Fab. If you're interested in one, there's a link in the description below. So go down there and check it out. Well, the carbs are painted and powder coated and I got all the tape off and everything. These little suckers, I mean, to do detailed masking on these, uh, that, that was a real pain. I know I said this earlier in the video, but I just wanted to reiterate it. it it's much worth, well worth the effort. I know it's going to be. Now, what I'm gonna do now is reassemble these. You guys can watch on, I'll do it in fast forward. I typically do not do videos in fast forward mode because I don't know, I personally don't care for them, but in this situation, yeah, uh, I'll be doing that. Now, I won't be rebuilding the carbs uh, because the screws that I'm putting back in these are not the factory screws. They are Allen head screws. And the screws that I got are too short to hold the gaskets and everything else. What my main concern is right now is getting this entire assembly back together and actuating. That's my main goal. And to get it on the engine so I can, you know, get an idea of what it looks like and give you guys a view of just the contrast of the before and after.
Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This came out sweet. And it articulates. That was the main reason why I put this together. There's still some work that needs to be done on it. Uh, I forgot to powder coat these small pieces that what this does is articulates the choke, engages the choke system. And oh yeah, these little screws in here. Also another thing, uh, I mentioned earlier, these screws that I got, the Allen heads, they're too short. So I'm going to get some longer ones and, you know, refit those, uh, especially these down here on the bottom. These screws are so short that if I put the gasket in there, they will not engage. So this is just a mock-up of basically to make sure that I got this back together right. And I did. Uh, one thing that I've noticed about systems like this, anytime that you have uh, a multiple amount of small articulating systems, that are combined into one large one. Just looking at the overall picture of it can be uh, very uh, intimidating. If you break it down and just look at one system by itself, it's not so bad, which is basically what I did on this. Uh, like I said, if you ever do this, uh, take pictures. I mean, I did, and I mess with this stuff all the time. Not a four bank system, like I said earlier, this is the first time I've ever, ever torn one of these apart but it actually wasn't that hard. Um, it, it, I mean, the first time is gonna be harder than the second or third or fourth time you do it. But yeah, I would tear into another one of these absolutely no problem whatsoever. I, I don't have any issues with it. So if anybody tells you that, oh, you can't tear those apart or you shouldn't tear those apart, you know, it's a madhouse, whatever. Uh, yeah, you can do it, all right? So if you have a four bank set like this, and it looks nasty like mine did. Here's what it looked like beforehand before I ever did anything to it. You, you can rebuild these, or cosmetically and internally also. Let's see what this looks like on the motor. See how all the colors mate with that. Wow, that came out really nice. And it works, you know, it articulates. So that was my main concern. You know, taking it apart, getting it back together, and it doing what it's supposed to do. Now, I still have a long ways to go in getting this motor running, but then again, I don't. Uh, I have all the parts for it, the ignition, uh, new rings for the pistons, so on and so forth. So really, it shouldn't be much longer, and I'll have this up on the stand running. I wanna make sure I get this going before I work on the rest of the bike. I mean, it's kind of pointless, really, to not have a running motor and then, you know, have a bike that's done it just doesn't make sense in my book thanks for joining in i hope you got a lot out of this video i got a lot out of making it i really enjoyed doing this uh, and i'm so happy that the colors turned out the way they did so anyway i hope it helped some of you guys out out there and if not i uh, hope you just got some good entertainment out of it i will see you guys next week thanks for joining in bye now